one is out to, to do any damage to you whatsoever, and that we're all in this together. We all have to work for a living, so we might as well enjoy the time that we're together. And that's the culture that we've created here at my company. And you think that any company could move their culture in that direction by implementing this program? Well, you know, it, it takes work like anything else, and, and you get out of it what you put in it. And that's why I mentioned that to the schools who embrace the foundation. I say, like anything in life, the more you put into this, um, the implementation of this be kind message, the more you're going to get out of it. So if you have two bosses at work who are doing it just because of lip service, um, then no, it's not going to work. Of course not. You have to buy in. Everybody has to buy in. Everybody has to buy in to your, to your culture, whether you're in a school, whether you're at work, what, anywhere, wherever you are. How could this be implemented in the political arena, where in this country currently we so desperately need the disparate views to be more gentle and kind to each other in order to come to some compromise that works best for everyone? That's a question that um, I can only take a stab at answering, okay? Great. Because um, one of the things that I've learned in my 47 years is that we are just people. We are full of problems and issues. We have, you know, sometimes we can be incredibly kind to one another. Sometimes we can be vicious. Um, and, and it's me too, it's me too. I mean, I, f I find myself um, maybe doing something that, that goes against the, the grain of, of what I'm trying to espouse every day. And even though um, earnestly trying so desperately every day to, to do the right thing, I'm still just a human being. And so there are times when I, I disappoint myself terribly. And I think that, I think that within each of us, I, I'm kind of, I'm a big like Walt Whitman believer in that, you know, the nature of humans is good. I really do believe that. I think that was witnessed in such an incredible way after 9-11, you know, complete strangers, New Yorkers who, you know, are notoriously known for keeping to themselves that they, you know, they're literally strangers risking their lives for other strangers. I think that, um, I think that we as humans, by nature, are good. I really do. I think that, um, you know, the way you're parented, the way you're guided as a, as a youngster is very, very important. Um, I think that, you know, there are many, many kind people out there that, that have come from broken homes and that they recognize that the importance of being kind to, to one another. Because they witness the opposite in their home. Yeah, sure. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people say, you know, I don't ever want to be like my, my parent. I know a, a couple of friends of mine that I think are some of the best parents that I know, and they came from just terribly broken homes with terrible parents as, as examples. Um, you know, and so, so getting back to the question, um, I, I don't, I mean, it, maybe it's maybe it's this, Bruce. If you turn on the nightly news, all you see is stories of murder and suicide, and and awful things. Job loss, and it, war, and it, it, it's what makes the news. And unfortunately, you know, if this is all we see, this is all we believe. And so, one of the things that I've been so encouraged about is, you know, I I was one of these people five years ago who was saying our country is going to end up, you know, in in the in in turmoil and horrific turmoil because. We're going to hand our, our, our country to a generation of young people who don't care, who don't get it, who don't understand, who don't have an appreciation for history and, and for our veterans and these things. And I am here to tell you that that may be true to a very small degree because there are some kids that really need help. But I have met some incredible young people. And I'm talking 17, 18 year old juniors and seniors in high school all the way down to uh, first and second and third graders. I feel very confident that we have some amazing children that we are going to hand this country over to. Um, but I just, I just believe that um, we're human and we make lots of mistakes, and that, that kindness is contagious. You know, our actions are contagious, whether we join together in laughter or in ridicule. And the more that we can focus our energies and attention on being kind and doing kind things, then it's contagious. I mean, kindness, like measles and mumps. Um, it's catching. Apathy, fear, it's, it's contagious. It's catching. It's catching. Um, but what we need, and this is what I believe, I believe that within each of us, um, both collectively and individually, we have huge untapped reserves of kindness. But what we need is the motivation to draw upon them more frequently. That's, I really believe that. I believe that the Josh Stevens Foundation 
because acting is one of those motivations that hey you know what it's it is cool to be kind and you know what I'm going to do something today that's going to make a difference in somebody's day and man if 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 we just started that ripple in one small part of this country like Las Vegas I believe that it'll ripple outward and I that's just my maybe idealistic viewpoint it's interesting that of all the cities in America you chose Sin City to start it probably the city well you know I, mean, I guess least so, famous for kindness yeah, the least famous for kindness however I can tell you that that this this community of ours has has been incredible to us I mean as compassionate as you can imagine I mean strangers strangers that continue three years later to to pick up our family and help us take one step forward I mean it's just been so humbling my wife and I are just every every night we pray and we thank God that we have a community of people who care about us and about our family and uh, and so now we in turn are trying to do the same for others well I appreciate that what other service projects have you been involved in in the past? Well, we one of the things that we are tr are, are trying to do is live up to our resume, so to speak. Okay, um, that was an expression my son and I shared a lot. You know that if you're going to put something on your resume, you have to it has to be true and you have to live up to it. And um, so we, as as an organization that is, is espousing the terminology and the nomenclature of be kind. Uh, we, we decided early on that we needed to do exactly that in our community. And so we, as a foundation, you know, and we don't really like to brag about it on the website because I, you know, I, think, that, I think that acts of kindness that are anonymous are, are, are better. And so, but we as an organization, um, on the fifth of every month, we choose to do something kind for somebody in the community, whether it's a group of people, whether it's a grieving family, whether um, at Christmas time, one of the things we did was we, we went and spoke with a store manager at a Kmart in, a, in kind of a uh, difficult part of town. And we asked him to identify <clears throat> 12 people who have who had their layaway purchases on layaway for, for the upcoming Christmas and that he could identify that they were gifts for their children or gifts for children. And so what we did as an organization is we went in and paid $600, so $50 toward 12 different people's layaway purchases. So, then so they happened? walked in to make the next payment and the balance is $50 less than they thought. That's exactly right. And, and here was the fun part of it for us. The manager was just, was, he was amazing. He worked really closely with us and kept us abreast of what was happening. We didn't want to know who the people were, but we did want to hear some of the reactions. So what we asked in, in return was um, when the people came in, exactly as you described, they came in to make a layaway purchase and some of them, they paid the layaway purchase off completely. They were, walk, they were walked into the manager's office, he met with them and said, hey, by the way, the Josh Stevens Foundation has gone ahead and paid $50 toward your layaway purchases and that makes them paid off or whatever. Um, and they, they just wanted, the only thing they wanted to, for you to do in return is to take this kindness card and go out sometime in the next day or two and catch somebody being kind. So in other words, pay an act of kindness forward. Go do something kind for somebody. Go catch somebody in the act of kindness. But go just pay some act of kindness forward as a result of somebody doing something for you. And uh, and and the manager, uh, you know, he called us, you know, every couple of days and just shared some of the stories with us that, you know, some of the, the parents that came in and were so grateful and it really was beautiful. It was a beautiful story. Fifty so dollars can make a lot of difference for somebody shopping sure. at Kmart. Well, you know, we were told that um, we were told that sometimes people come in and they'll make a two dollar. Uh, purchase toward their layaway purchase and you know, I mean it, fifty dollars really did make a difference I mean I think it made a difference with 12 or with you know 12 different families was that your money or the foundation it was money? the foundation's money yeah do you have a spiritual practice other than church attendance that you could share with us um, my my spiritual practice is that I pray I pray now more than I ever have in my life um, I pray what do you pray for well I pray for my family I pray for my son. I pray that that he is in a place um, that, if given the opportunity, he wouldn't come back here um, because I would give anything to have my son back. I pray for um, other families that are hurting. I pray for um, I pray for people that I know who need praying for. Um, I pray all the time now. I mean, I just I if I one of the things that I do now is if if I just recently had a friend diagnosed with uh, with a f 
and he was ba I think he was essentially given about a five-year death sentence with a, with a diagnosis. And I've, I've spoken to him several times in the last few days. And I, t I tell him, I say, I'm praying for you and your family. And rather than, I used to say that, and then I would hang up, and then if I remembered at night when we said our family prayers, that I would include them in my prayers. Now one of the things I do is I hang up the phone, I close my door to my office, and I pray, and I pray for their family, and I pray that God give them the strength to endure this. And I don't always necessarily necessarily pray for a reprieve he for healing. I pray for the family that they can they can deal with this and know that um, they are loved. And this particular guy, he's a wonderful father and a wonderful husband, and he's probably going to lose. You know. His family is going to lose him, and so I don't. I, I do pray for healing for him, but I also at the same time say, if that's not your will, then then I just pray that you give the family the strength to understand that um, you know there's a there's a there's a greater purpose, and that someday it will be revealed to us. I'm going to give you two examples of viewers. One is someone pretty much like yourself. Nice family, nice business. Maybe they're single. Maybe they have a family. Whatever. But they're doing well in their life. They have, they're socially active. Sure. They have a lot going on. They're busier than a one-armed paper hanger, just as you are. Mm -hmm. And th but they're but differently than you. They're not of service to anyone but themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other person is someone who's maybe they're serially unemployed. They're struggling in their life. Family, no family, not. But it's all they can do to get dinner on the table each day. So. Why would either of those people want to be of service to someone other than themselves? And what would be an appropriate beginner's service project for each of those examples? Wow. I really, I really think that you have more faith in me to answer questions in, a, in, a, in an intelligent way. Um, I, I will say that of the two people you just described, I probably most resembled the first um, up until about three years ago. Although, although we, 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 we did, you know, support organizations and, and charities and that sort of thing, but differ differently than I do now. Um, I do it now with this, this open, shattered, d destroyed heart. And um, I would say that there, unfortunately there's too many people like both of the people you described. I think that it's a little more understandable for person number two to be in the position they are because they are struggling to survive on their own and to make ends meet and that um, that philanthropy and, and service is is down their priority list. I, I would say that I would, I would be far more disappointed in person number one who has everything going for them. Um, they have a loving family, they are, they're, they're, they're cruising around life in this little bubble like I was doing. Um, and, and really maybe not as, as cognizant or aware of people that are hurting and because they're, they're out there everywhere. Um, and I would say maybe a beginning, uh, a way to get started is, you, you know, you have to, this has to come from your heart, okay? It has to. I think each of us have our heart and our conscience telling us that there are people that are hurting um, and that I think that maybe we need to listen to our inner voice, just we need to not just listen to our inner voice, but act upon our inner voice. Now, this is this brings me to this point. Empathy and compassion essentially have the same uh, definition. Okay, empathy is is the ability to feel and understand the thoughts and the feelings of somebody else, whether they're grieving, whether they're joyful, whether they're sorrowful. Whatever the case. Um, compassion, on the other hand, compassion is the exact same thing, but the difference is the compassion. Call, is a call for action. It's implemented. It's implementing. And so um, I believe that we all have some level of compassion within us. Okay, We need to figure out a way to go from the empathy where we just understand and it's terrible and it's sad and it's unfortunate and man I'm so much better off to putting it into action, becoming compassionate. And that if there was, if there was, a, if there was anything that I could you know, be a part of, a small part of teaching or, or educating.